Councilmember Perry will not be in attendance, and uh, Councilmember Wesson is convening another meeting and uh, may, may be able to attend. But if we move very quickly, we won't have to worry about it. Um, we have uh, four items on the consent calendar, uh, four, six, nine, and ten. Uh, since we do not have a quorum, we will uh, right. move those as a communication from the chair items, do we have on to council. One. Item number three and eight. Items number three and eight uh, need to be continued. So we can move, and then item number three. Three will continue. Oh, the, oh, okay, we added that one already. Okay. Okay, so let's move forward with the uh, commission appointments, items number one and two. Sure. Item number one, communications from Mayor and City Ethics Commission relative to the appointment of Ms. Betsy Handler to the Rent Adjustment Commission for the term ending May 20, 2014. Item number two, communications from the Mayor and City Ethics Commission relative to the appointment of Ms. Eileen Winderman to the Rent Adjustment Commission for the term ending May 20, 2014. And both items are scheduled for today in council. Okay. Um, is uh, can we have both um, both uh, step forward, please? I'm I'm uh, stunned to see you here. Thank you. I actually brought my medal along. If you want to see it. Wow. Uh, the nominee, uh, Ms. Winderman, uh, ran in the Boston Marathon, so I'm, I'm surprised to see you here. Very um, pleased to see you here. Um, yeah, I'm more pleased to be here than um, even usual. <laughs> yeah, uh, obviously. Uh, so first we have uh, Betsy Handler, uh, and I've met with both of, of these nominees. Uh, so if you could uh, please just uh, say why you uh, want to take on this uh, incredible new role. Uh, the reason that I am immensely interested in serving on the Rent Adjustment Commission is because uh, for seven years I was the litigation director of Inner City Law Center dealing with housing issues uh, on behalf in that capacity uh, of low income, uh, very low income tenants. And I believe that I bring a, a certain amount of knowledge and expertise uh, that would be extremely helpful to the city and the uh, commission. Uh, I'm familiar with the issues. And of course, I understand that my role on the commission is different uh, from what my role was as an advocate, but I hope that I can serve uh, as well as I think I did uh, at Inner City. Thank you. Did you have any questions? I just I just want to take a moment and thank you for your hard work uh, through the years, these past 12 years in District 1 and being uh, responsive to those who don't typically have a voice. Uh, your organization, your work has made a tremendous difference to thousands of families. And uh, I want to take a moment and just thank you. Uh, for your hard work in that capacity. It's great to have your point of view in this particular commission, given all the cutbacks that are happening at the federal level, at the state level. Uh, how we address some of these pressures is going to be crucial, especially with the perspective that speaks to the needs of, of those who are uh, indeed in, in such uh, pressured situations. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. Okay, we do have a number of cards uh, on this appointee and, and uh, also the second appointee as well. So our, our first, Bill Huey. Uh, good morning, council members. My name is Bill Huey. I'm president of the Fair Housing Coalition. We're a civil rights organization for landlords, and we believe in equality under the law for landlords and renters. These two candidates are the wrong people for the job. I'll tell you why. They have a background and a history of being anti-landlord. What we need on any commission that has to do with LHD, if you want to have integrity and you want to do the right thing in LA, 
is have an equal amount of renters and landlords, because renters have one experience, landlords have another. You know, for example, in West Hollywood, I think they've had a zero rent freeze for the last seven or eight years. Now, that sounds wonderful, but yet the city and the county and the DWP keeps raising their rents. So you shouldn't ask landlords to absorb all these municipal increases and not be able to pass them on to their renters proportionally. This is unfair. These are the wrong people. You've got to restructure the whole H LHD, and here's a chance on the rent control board, put whatever amount of people are on there, four or six, an equal number of landlords and renters, and haggling among themselves and discussing issues, they will generally, most of the time, come to a fair resolution. This lady here, if she has a history of going after landlords, she's probably seen some bad landlords. But not all landlords are bad people. It's, let's just say 10% of all people in humanity are bad. Sure, you have bad landlords, you have bad cops, you have bad people in every minority group. But th these organizations and the way the LHD conduct, oh, it was one minute? Yes, I'm sorry. Okay, you're putting minority landlords out of business. The people can't fight back. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, Carlos Macara? Good morning. Good morning, council members. Uh, my name is Carlos Macara, first uh, generation American, former Marine. Um, we are very good landlords. We, we were once in REAP and we got out of it. Um, six years today, my father passed away, John Macara, and we were, we, he was a member of um, Aglo Association for 50 years. My mother is right here. Right there. She's a widow. We've been going through a lot of stuff. I work very hard on the properties. When I take off this suit, I have my cell phone and I'm on, I'm on call 24-7. I speak four languages. I train in Europe and I'm, a, and I'm a chef. I had to give up what I was doing to take care of my mother, take care of our properties. We only have but a few, not too much. It's a mom and pops thing. I volunteer my time. Uh, I'm, on the ch I'm the chair of the Latino Roundtable for Spanish-speaking people that own properties and they're getting robbed and cheated because they don't know the laws. So please be fair, use your conscience and be fair what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Harold Greenberg. Good morning, council persons. I'm a member of AGLA and uh, fortunately I know both of the uh, applicants for this particular position. I respect both of them, I have opposed in court and in different litigation of Betsy Handler. The question, frankly, is in speaking of the military, when I was a young JAG officer, one of the young lieutenants on the board, a case I was defending, said, send the guilty so-and-so in, but he didn't say so-and-so, uh, and let's hear the evidence. That's essentially what we're talking about here. We need equality. It's the same thing if you appoint Bill Huey to this commission, or me to the commission, even if we try to be fair, we have a certain background. That's where we are with Betsy Handler. I think it is a question here. We've got to have people that's impartial. This is an appeals board. You can't have somebody with a background of Betsy. What we need, frankly, are a different situation where we can have justice. And it doesn't mean just us. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, we don't... Don't need applause. Uh, Sabrina Simmons. Um, I think everyone is making a very clear point. I do hope you are hearing it. Uh, Ms. Hanther here, I um, feel is probably a very nice person. However, she is definitely partial to tenants. The Los Angeles Housing Department already has a reputation. Mr. Alarcon, are you listening to me at all? Okay. Um, that they already have a reputation for being um, against landlords to the point where we are automatically vilified just simply because we own property and rent it. Tenants are never blamed for the things that they have clearly done. And to have this woman who is on the side of tenants and has been by her own admission for the past seven years diligently attacking housing providers on behalf of tenants 
day in and day out for seven years to say that now she is suddenly going to be impartial when a housing provider has to come to her for, for a fair um, appeal is not reasonable thinking, clearly. Thank you. Robert, uh, Bo I believe it's Bolster. Good morning, uh, Councilman Alarcon and other council members and, and members of the commission. Uh, my name is Rob Bolster. Uh, my background is officer in the U.S. Marine Corps, 35 years a, a licensed contractor, uh, a union shop in uh, the state of California, owner of 24 apartment owners, units in the San Fernando Valley and, and 16 in the state of Utah. Uh, I want to point out to the board that there is a template for balance in these kinds of boards, and that is the Taft-Hartley Act, which, while not exactly the same, I think you can see the relationship, and the Taft-Hartley Act uh, calls for when there are groups that are antithetical, i.e. labor management, or in this case, tenant landlord, and that's not to say that I'm antagonistic toward my tenants. I have 24 wonderful tenants here <clears throat> in the LA area, but clearly the issue can be construed as antithetical. Taft-Hartley requires even distribution of management and labor. Uh, the distribution here on this board should be evenly distributed between tenant and landlord. I want to point out one other thing. You're, you're over your time, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Yolanda Gonzalez. Good morning. Yolanda Gonzalez, past president of Boyle Heights through the Neighborhood Council in Venice. First of all, we have a diversity in one of the most important cities that we represent as business people. We have some of the most eloquent landlords in this city. Not only that, we have degrees. And not only that, some of us already speak five languages. And you need to appoint people that are diverse and are bipartisan according to the education that I've gotten through the Neighborhood Council. Second of all, we as landlords not only contribute to the city, but I'm going to tell you something. Our tenants, my tenants, love me because we already, I am a HUD certified occupancy specialist just like my husband, so we've been through the realm. And not only that, we put people through schools, we put people through buying their own homes. So I think you need to change the, the form in which you put people on these commissions. And that's what we're going to do through the Neighborhood Council movement. Thank you. Uh, Louis E. Uh, hello, I'm a property owner in the city of LA. I, I strongly oppose these two nominees. Um, I heard I heard the name Inner City Law Center, and that, that made my heart beat a little bit. Uh, all I know is what they do is they go around and they try to they try to get tenants to sue their landlords. They they make these class action lawsuits. I have a few friends that are in these class action lawsuits right now, and they're done by the Inner City Law Center, and they're paying hundreds of thousands of dollars to their attorneys just to fight these frivolous lawsuits. And uh, my friends have eventually won them, and. Uh, Got inner city law center out of you know, out of their out of their business, but it it took a lot of money and time. These are not the people you should be nominating to the uh, rent adjustment commission. It it's it, it, it's criminal. Yeah, as a, yeah, exactly. It's criminal. It shouldn't be done. Just find some other people. Just you know, just find people who are are not biased. Are fair. Thank you very much. Uh, is it Judah Romero? Good morning. I'm Judah Romero. I'm a landlord, and uh, I uh, know that the housing department in LA from the top down is very anti landlord. And I see that these uh, two ladies are. Uh, the City Ethics Commission uh, nominated them 
I don't think there is anything ethical about somebody who has been working solely for the tenants. I mean, it's a nice thing to do, but the landlords uh, should have rights as well, and it is not a proper and fair thing to only appoint people who are towards a, a tenants' rights. So I hope that and urge you to rethink these uh, um, uh, appointments because it is not fair and we would hope that you are fair to landlords as well as to t tenants. Thank you. Uh, Al Simmons. Al Simmons. Good morning. My name is Louisa Simmons. I came to this country when I was seven years old. I am an immigrant, although you may not think I am. I own property with my husband, and we, he works hard every day so that we can take care of the property. I try to do, be a very good landlord. I even anticipate problems before they even come about. I try to do things. The tenants don't necessarily cooperate when they get, they don't, their housekeeping. Hey, can you speak to the, the appointment? Pardon the me? item on the agenda is the appointment. I understand that. I feel that these two people may be biased. I don't feel that it's a fair appointment to just put them on. The mayor is going out of office soon, and these people are his appointees, apparently, which your commission would like to okay. I don't think it's fair to the property owners to just put them on and just, you know, just put them out there. We need people who are on the side of the property owners and the tenants as well. Not just someone who's going to have a biased opinion by virtue of the way they conduct their, 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 their employment in the past number of years. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I notice all of the cards submitted for the second uh, nominee are the same. Are you, are you going to say the same things? I mean, do I have to call you again? Um, those of you who spoke against the second nominee will not be able to speak again. Uh, so those of you who didn't, uh, I probably should have done this different, but I'm going to call you again. Uh, Harold Greenberg. Harold, you, you, did you speak against the second nominee as well? Yes. Okay, then, then you've already made your, your comments. Well, I didn't speak against her. You spoke against her, and, and you submitted a card for that purpose. You spoke against both nominees. I'm not going to allow you to speak. Carlos Maca. Yes, I don't, I don't believe you spoke against the second nominee, but you spoke against the first. So uh, if you'd like to speak again, please. If you wouldn't, uh, we would appreciate it, but that's okay. Well, uh, I just, all I want to say is just be fair what you're, what, what, what's going on here because uh, um, people mentioned earlier, this is a very diversified city. There's a lot of people that are very educated and that are not biased. This is a conflict of interest for all property owners and tenants alike. We're good owners. The renters there that we have have been there for more than 20, 30 years. So I'll, I'm just saying that I'm not, I don't, these ladies may be nice ladies in person. I don't know you and I don't want to talk to you, but I, you know what, you have to be, I believe you have to be fair and have somebody that's with the tenant and the landlords. Um, and that's all. Thank you. Uh, S.D. Simmons, I, I believe you did speak against both. Uh, no, I did not. I spoke against uh, Ms. Handler. Okay. And, um, but I didn't say anything at all about Alan? Aline. Aline. Okay, great. Um, now, my understanding about Aline is that you worked with uh, the, you are currently, currently in charge. You have a job with the West Hollywood Housing Department. And you have nothing to do with the West Excuse Hollywood me. Housing Department? Could you address your comments to the committee, please? Oh, sure. Happy to. Um, I'm against the appointment of Aline. Um, she has apparently worked with the West Hollywood Housing Department. They are known for their radical, radical uh, um, uh, um, rules and laws against the housing providers in their city. Zero um, uh, 
uh, uh, rent increases for several years this has been going on. If this is the kind of attitude that we want to bring to the city of Los Angeles where the housing providers have already been vilified by LAHD, then, you know, what can I say? Then, you know, but really these are not mis- Aline, Aline is definitely not the person to bring on in this uh, commission here, this uh, okay. rent adjustment Thank you. commission. Yolanda Gonzalez. Yes, um, Mr. Alarcon, I don't think Ms. Uh, Aline introduced, you allowed her to introduce herself to find out who she is and who, where she's coming from. But all I'm saying is that we need to change the elements and the way this city is run. We need to be more business-like and be more friendly in all aspects, and especially the most important thing is housing. You have people out there that are more qualified for these positions and with very qualified degrees. And this is what you need to, as, a, as the committee, look into. This is a very important appointment. And it's my understanding that this is a paid position no, it also. Isn't. It isn't? Well, it doesn't matter. But we need to look into a better, better element of people to head this commission. That's all I'm saying. Thank you. Uh, Louis? Sir. Sir? Louis E? Yes, I, I strongly oppose the second nominee as well. She's the, uh, she was the director of the Rent Stabilization Board in uh, West Hollywood. To me, that's, that's really biased. I mean, I'd rather get a tenant than someone like that. I think the average tenant would be less biased <laughs> than her. I mean, this is ridiculous. I, I can't even believe this is happening right now. Um, I don't know, this seems so corrupt. I mean, what, what they're doing in the housing department is they're putting properties in REAP and giving the properties are being given to preferred preferred developers and people who buy it all cash for pennies on the dollar and then they build nice luxury condos and they make a lot of money and they, they work out deals, you know, I don't know, but this is not how it should be done. There should be a fair board, equal landlords, equal tenants, and we'd have some you know, we'd have some justice going on in the city. Things would be done right. I mean this is these nominees, I mean they shouldn't, they, shouldn't, they shouldn't be on this board. This is not what this board is about. Thank you. Thank you. Bill Huey. Hi. Good morning. I'm Bill Huey, Fair Housing Coalition. I have friends that are landlords in West Hollywood. They call West Hollywood the People's Republic of West Hollywood because they believe that the city is run by communists. And they said, you know, this is unfair because... The city raises fees on these people, the taxes go up, the utilities, and you can't pass them on to the tenants. This is, you know, uh, a friend of mine knows Kevin Spacey, the actor. He's got a one bedroom in West Hollywood he's paying 210 for a month. He doesn't even live there, but it's cheaper than renting a motel, so he just keeps the apartment. I mean, the dry bank landlords in the bankruptcy, West Hollywood is not a low-income neighborhood. You know, people can afford to pay at least fair market value rent, but the, the people who run it, uh, I, I met with them, and they're on another planet. Stalin would be proud of these people, okay? And we can't bring people like that. You bring them into L.A., the housing department is flawed already. Let's have boards where landlords and renters can talk honestly and calmly, and the right decisions are made. We don't need somebody from the People's Republic. Thank you. Um, Judo Romero? Again, I find it very unethical to uh, nominate these two ladies, and uh, I uh, hope that you hear what we are saying and that your minds are open to this. It's not, it's not fair. It's a uh, um, conflict of interest, and uh, please do not nominate the, or they are already nominated, but do not appoint these two ladies to, to these jobs. It's not right, and the city should get more functional. It would be more dysfunctional with that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, S.D. Simmons? S.D. Is that you? 
No, you, you submitted... I'm happy to speak. No, you sp submitted two cards on this item, but one is under a different name. One and two. No, you have another card. You have a three? Your else? Oh, that's there's two Simmons. Oh. Okay, but you already spoke. I did, but I'm happy to tell you again. No, no. <laughs> I'm sure you are. Okay, thank you. Um, we are now joined by uh, Councilmember Wesson, constituting a quorum. Uh, so I'd like to take a time out. No. I called her the first time. Um, items uh, number four, six, and nine, four, six, nine, and ten uh, were uh, consent items. I sent them forward as a communication from from the chair. But now that uh, Councilmember Wesson is here, I'd like to have those moved on consent. Uh, that okay. is the order. Um, uh, items uh, three and eight were continued. We're on commission appointments. Uh, I I did get a brief comments from. Um, the first commission appointment, uh, Betsy Handler. I did not uh, get comments from Aileen Winderman. Uh, Mr. Wesson, I just, I want you to know she ran in the Boston Marathon, and so we're very uh, blessed and, and pleased that she is here. Yes, we um, so with that, uh, I'd like to ask uh, Aileen Winderman uh, to state, uh, uh, after all that wonderful testimony, why you want to... Uh, <laughs> donate your time to uh, to the city of Los Angeles. Oh, yeah, it's, it's certainly different now. <laughs> um, as people have pointed out, I was the director of housing for the city of West Hollywood. And um, we, uh, the department, not only built housing and, uh, and funded housing, but we also um, ran the rent stabilization group there. Uh, our job in rent stabilization was to provide a fair place for landlords and tenants to be able to come and um, to administer the rent stabilization ordinance fairly on both sides. We, of course, help many tenants. We also made a tremendous effort to work with uh, property owners to hold a um, forum for them to understand how to maintain their buildings. Um, I'm very proud of the record of what we've done and uh, the fairness with which I approach my work and the fair fairness with which I can approach this commission. Thank you. Um, I, I did want to make a couple of points regarding the comments that were made. First of all, uh, the uh, mayor of Los Angeles nominates the appointees. The city council ratifies those nominations. It is extremely rare for us to not ratify uh, a nominee because we give uh, great discretion to the mayor uh, who is elected by all the people of Los Angeles uh, to uh, with regard to their, their nominees. Uh, so unless there's some egregious uh, problem with a nominee, we typically... Uh, will uh, ratify those nominees. Uh, I, I secondly want to mention there was somebody made mention of the Taft Hartley Act, which is a labor relations uh, uh, act, and uh, I don't think it has any jurisdiction whatsoever. Excuse me, excuse me, you are out of order, sir. You are out of order. Uh, the Taft-Hartley Act has nothing to do with the Rent Adjustment Commission and certainly doesn't guide its uh, its legal uh, provisions. And so, uh, so that uh, I, I I don't even know what what uh, merit there is in in that uh, conversation. Um, the board is uh, composed of seven members, and uh, and they are diverse. Uh, they come from all parts of Los Angeles. They I know some of them personally, and I can tell you they are. Uh, uh, they have uh, differences uh, of uh, opinion politically uh, and otherwise, and uh, it, it it isn't necessarily the board that you would like. Uh, I, but it, you know, <laughs> you have. Excuse me, please. You're not. You're out of order. Uh, the The point is that the mayor makes these nominees, and we ratify them unless we feel there's an egregious. Um, problem with one of the nominees and so so I mean really you're, you're the, the power of, of the rent adjustment commission and the uh, the mayor's nominees is to uh, within the power of the mayor so you really have to work on the, on your selection for the next mayor to uh, to uh, really uh, uh, take advantage of, of their nominees the, the the other point I'd like to make is the rent adjustment commission was created 
to uh, protect tenants primarily. That was its primary function. Uh, and, uh, and so if there is a bias uh, in that, you know, it's, we, I don't think on an individual case there is an effort to be biased, uh, but the commission was there to protect uh, tenants. Um, and, and so uh, some of the arguments uh, don't make a lot of sense to me because that's exactly why it's there. Uh, and, uh, and, and then finally, I'd just like to say all of us have family members who are landlords and who are tenants. Uh, my wife is a landlord. She's had good tenants. She's had bad tenants. Uh, and, and we get that. Um, but we are, we are trying to, uh, the primary purpose of the Rent Adjustment Commission is to protect the most egregious, uh, against the most egregious offenses. Uh, now, you know, that, that was how it was created. Uh, if, if on, on occasion uh, mistakes are made or people feel there are mistakes made, you know, we, we, uh, we, as you know, we've had this conversation before uh, that we, we are in, always uh, considerate of continuous improvement. So with that in mind, I have met with these two people personally. Uh, I, I think they're fine nominees. And um, if there are any other questions. I, I do want to make some observations, if I may, Mr. Chair, is that when I look at the background, and this is about... Uh, working with talented folks that have skill sets that perform these functions. And, and if I may uh, look at the resume of Ms. Betsy Handler, uh, we are speaking of experience working with the Department of Justice. Uh, we're with universities, with a whole range of entities that speak to a skill set that we truly need in this function and role. So when you start talking about uh, biases, uh, I can, as rent advocates, as rent department of, 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 um, of a whole layer of, of, of work that just speaks to discretion that is about a balancing act. So to me, when I look at all the challenges I've had in my district, when we are dealing with tenants who do suffer and landlords who do suffer, I've seen it from both sides of the table. We do need a person and an entity that has the ability to have the background to judge, the background to assess, the background to ask questions, and the background to make decisions. And so I fully recommend the two appointees. I thank you because I know it's not easy, but the fact is the folks that are speaking here today, I understand your point of view. You're advocating to a certain pers perspective. I can probably fill up this room with people that would say just the opposite. Uh, the question is, what do we need to do to make this a better city? And I think that's the goal that we need to achieve. So thank you so much for your work, for your service, and I look forward to working with you in the future. With that, um, uh, Mr. Wesson doesn't have any questions, uh, and I, uh, Mr. Reyes moves, and... Uh, Seconded by Mr. Wesson, uh, the committee approves uh, unanimously uh, these nominees. Okay, next item. Item number five. That's my first uh, boo all week. Item number five, motion Alarcon Kokorian relative to the authorization review program, $500,000 in CDBG savings from the Pacoima Retail Space Project to the free hab rehabilitation project to assist with necessary capital improvements and other eligible expenses and related actions. And this item is scheduled for today in council. Okay, this item is, um, is related to my district uh, where I am moving uh, $500,000 in community development block grants uh, actually into uh, CD6 uh, to enable uh, that community to benefit from a um, uh, a, a rehabilitation program uh, that will uh, serve, uh, will provide 200 beds and create uh, a, a couple dozen jobs. Uh, so uh, it's a great investment. But I did have to add an amendment, uh, and that is uh, that we that um, 2A establish a new account for freehab. Uh, and or the teen project as fiscal agent in the amount of 500000 within the uh, Community Development Trust Fund number 424. Uh, that is my amendment. Um, there are no cards on this item. So if there's no objection, 
We'll move that item uh, to council with the unanimous vote. Um, you know what, uh, but we already moved item number six, but, but I didn't realize there was a card on item number six. I was just given the card. Mr. Sachs? Um, so actually, I'm supposed to rescind what we did, or what do you recommend? Uh, correct. You can reconsider the item. Okay. Um, without objection, we're going to reconsider item number six, uh, because I didn't know we had received a card in between your arrival and... Uh, the first time we sent it out. Mr. Sachs. Yes, thank you. Good morning, Councilman Alarcon. Um, very quickly, um, one of the things I noticed on this item, and in, in addition to item number seven, is a fiscal impact statement is submitted, but there's no community impact statement. And you will vote on this now, and it will proceed to City Council as a item that's already been heard in committee, which will probably mean that it will not be pulled and... Um, when will the community impact statement be issued? Should the community impact statement be issued as a caveat of the items on the agenda? I mean, um, if it's important enough for a fiscal impact statement to be submitted, then a community impact statement should be submitted. And if after you voted as a council, as a um, item already held in committee, as, as a consent item, when does the public find out about a community impact statement? I mean, this is information that needs to be addressed to the public sooner than later. Thank you. Um, if there are no more questions of the committee members, um, we had already uh, moved those items forward, but in the case of item number six, uh, do we have a motion from Mr. Wesson, a uh, second from Mr. Reyes, uh, that matter? is approved unanimously. Um, item number, where are we? Seven. Seven. Item number seven, LEHD and CAO reports relative to authorization to issue up to $10 million in tax-exempt multifamily mortgage revenue bonds for the Eagle Vista project located at 4260 North Eagle Rock Boulevard, Los Angeles, and approval of related loan documents. And this item is also scheduled for April 19th in City Council. Okay, I understand you just have to read some stuff into the record. Um, yes, Madeline Rackley with the CAO. Um, uh, the, Mr. CLA has already said pretty much everything I was going to say. <laughs> this item is in the 14th Council District, and uh, uh, the CAO is in agreement with the recommendations from the department. Okay. Is this affordable? It is affordable housing, and uh, there will be 55 units. 19 will be made to the developmentally disabled, 14 to home, uh, 15 to homeless veterans, and 21 to homeless and low-income seniors um, who are individuals and families. So it is uh, low-income and af affordable housing, and, and for veterans as well. Great. Thank you. Okay. If there are no objections, we will move that matter forward uh, with our approval. Sure. And you were adopting the CAO report, correct? Adopting the CAO report, yes. Yeah. That's exactly I, what I meant. I should, I, I, let me just restate what um, Mr. Keck said, that the uh, SIDLAC deadline is next Monday. It will be heard in council on Friday, so um, we'll, we'll be getting in by the skin of our teeth. So thank okay. you. Okay. Thanks, I don't think that changes the nature of our, no, no, no. our motion, so we're fine. Okay, item number 11, I believe, right? Item number 11, HACLA and CLA reports relative to approval of a fourth modification to the cooperation agreement between the city and HACLA concerning council oversight of HACLA actions. And this item has continued from the March 27, 2013 HCD meeting. Okay. Good morning. Uh, my name is Felipe Chavez. I'm with the CLA's office. On January 8, 2013, the council instructed our office to work with the city attorney uh, to prepare and present an, an amendment to the cooperation agreement between the city and the housing authority. Uh, the purpose of the agreement was to establish protocols for a systematic approach for openness, transparency, and communication between HACLA and the city. Um, 
this would constitute the fourth modification to the, to the agreement. And it was adopted by the Hackley Board of Commissioners on February 28, 2013. Our office recommends approval. And if you'd like, I can read the actual protocols that are included in the agreement. Um, well, the, each council member will be forwarded all HACLA Board of com, uh, Commissioner posted agendas. Upon council member request, HACLA will submit for council review any documents provided such, provided such request does not preclude HACLA from taking action in a timely member and manner and uh, be available to present to council and its committees. Um, I, uh, you know, I think this is something that is a long time coming and uh, I appreciate uh, the cooperation of HACLA uh, in this regard. So. Um, as we move forward, I, I anticipate that we'll have a much better working relationship uh, with HACLA uh, and hopefully we'll have fewer complaints from the community uh, with regard to HACLA. So uh, with that, if there are no questions, one question, yes? Just one question. Um, is there any way to give us the Reader's Digest version of what this really means? <laughs> um, I, I'm being a little facetious, but for the record, this is going to change what essentially between HACLA and what do these protocols do? Well, for the record, these, these protocols would basically establish a better, uh, better communication with HACLA and the city, and um, it would mean that HACLA would be more responsive to city council requests. Can you give me one example? Uh, I could, I could. Um, if you recall, uh, the previous executive director of HACLA uh, refused to come to city council uh, at our request, uh, stating that he was uh, afraid. Uh, he feared coming to city council. So uh, that's just one example. Um, and I think the authority for HACLA prior to this was essentially the authority that the city council had over HACLA was essentially that we could approve the, the nominees to their board uh, and not much more beyond that. Uh, so this establishes some protocols where HACLA will work more directly with us should we choose to have them do so. Uh, and if we request them to uh, present to us, they will, they've agreed that they will, uh, they will be present. Do we have the changes already available to the council? Yes. Okay. So give me, give me one example. I, I appreciate what the chairman just shared, but... One example of... Of the change. Oh, okay. The, well, one of the, one of the changes is uh, upon council member request, uh, submit for council review any ha any HACLA documents, including uh, any budget or any contracts. Provided such request does not preclude HACLA from taking action in a timely manner. So, any document that the council or any council member request, they would they, they'll respond. Correct. Okay. Great. Okay. So. Um, are there any objections to uh, the cooperation agreement? Uh, hearing none, then that matter is approved. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot the public comment card. Mr. Sachs. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you again. It's Arnold Sachs. It's a shame everybody left because this speaks volumes to how wacky this council is. They'll submit documents, but it won't change the effect of what they're doing. I believe when they had the sequestrus, sequestration, you had a hearing about Section 8 vouchers, and it was mentioned in the discussion that you don't control HACLA's budget. So you don't control the budget. You're going to get documentation, but don't interfere with their actions in a timely manner. And Councilman Alarcon, let me top your uh, example with the, the latest example when you had the, the now sitting HACLA CEO, for whatever reason. Uh, that was in December, I believe, and it was a timely manner, and she couldn't appear, and it was a 45-day waiting, 45 waiting period, and instead of putting it over for another week, you voted to put her in without having a hearing in city council chambers. So it addresses the fact that nothing is really done as far as any of the appointments that the mayor wants to make. I, I do want to make it clear. Uh, the uh, general manager is Doug Guthrie. 
I don't know who you're talking about, uh, but he, uh, uh, it, whatever situation you described does not apply to him, and he's sitting in the back. Uh, so uh, with that, uh, uh, this item is uh, approved and uh, recommended for council, council approval. Thank you. Um, we have one public comment card. Oh, Mr. Sachs. Yes, thank you again, Arnold Sachs. Um, it was a fascinating meeting yesterday regarding the, um, the, the outcome of CRA and property and how it was going to be so, uh, sold and, and parceled out by cities. And um, back in January of 2013, when the county was considering its Clean Water, Clean Beaches Act, Supervisor Antonovich made a motion regarding CRA funding. And in his motion, he mentioned $742.1 million in CRA funding has been received by the county since the dissolution of re redevelopment. So looking at that figure and saying, on average, over five years, $600 million in CRA funding had been distributed to the county of Los Angeles, how much of that money would have gone to the city? And looking at that figure and saying that's $3 billion in five years, can you name $600 million in low-income housing? My answer is no. Thank you very much. There are no other public comment cards. With that, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all.